Hey, how you doing today? Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing okay myself. Uh, can you introduce yourself to us and what you do and what company you work for? Uh, absolutely. So my name is Andrew. My pronouns are he, him, and I am currently a guest experience manager for entertainment at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Disney's Animal Kingdom. How did you get in that position? Uh, so my um, journey to this role is a little bit unique. Um, so I actually started uh, my my time in entertainment working for Carnival Cruise Line um, as an entertainment host. Um, I worked my way up to an assistant cruise director. Uh, and after that, I worked for a resort group down in uh, St. Martin. So after returning from St. Martin um, a little over a year and a half ago, uh, I joined the Disney company actually just working part-time attractions. Um, and over the next six months or so, I, I really um, put a lot of time and effort into networking. And so I met with a lot of entertainment leaders and entertainment proprietors. Uh, and then I was offered a temporary assignment for um, the character team over here at DAC. Character team, that's great. Have you ever uh, done any characters yourself? So when I worked for Carnival Cruise Line, I um, we had a few characters. We had Dr. Seuss, so we had a lot of Dr. Seuss activations. Um, we had like a parade, we had character dining, uh, as well as a couple shows that we did with those. Um, but other than that, uh, this is really my first time uh, leading an environment that was strictly characters. So um, I did I did that up until just about one month ago. And one month ago, I transferred to another part of entertainment at DAC, uh, which is atmosphere entertainment. So think, uh, you know, musicians. So like the, the Dapper Dans on Main Street in USA, so similar to that. Uh, and then I also oversee now um, Disney Photo Imaging, which is actually another umbrella, uh, another line of business that's technically under the entertainment uh, umbrella. Gotcha. What made you choose uh, entertainment as your form of work? So I grew up in a small town in Southwest Florida called Marco Island. Um, the population when I grew up is only about 5,000. Um, you know, it was really small, like the nearest mall was about 50 minutes and, and you know, Walmart was about 45 minutes away. And after I graduated high school, uh, I moved up to Orlando, which is where my dad uh, spent most of my childhood living. And I got just a seasonal job working at Disney. And that was kind of my first experience with, with working in entertainment. Um, alongside of that, I've always loved cruising. And so I was offered an opportunity to go work for Carnival Cruise Line in entertainment. And that is what pretty much uh, opened my eyes to the, the world of entertainment. Gotcha, gotcha. And um, as a... An uh, average week of work on the cruise line, not the, the Disney side, on the cruise line, what did that consist of? Uh, so as an assistant cruise director, um, you essentially do all the work on behalf of the cruise director. So the cruise director is essentially uh, the face of the ship. So they're the one hosting all the, the, the main shows. Um, so the assistant is, an assist, is, is essentially like an administrative assistant. So uh, we lead the entertainment hosts. Um, we do all of the scheduling for all of the shows. We handle, you know, um, typical things like like timing, um, sorry, like clock in and out times for the, for the employees. Um, and then we also coordinate all of our holiday activations. So um, with Carnival in particular, we have a shoreside team who's responsible for the design of all of our entertainment offerings. Uh, and then it's up to each individual ship to use the framework that they've designed um, and make it ship specific. So um, partnering with, with that shoreside team, making sure that all the supplies are onboarded and then meeting with the individual departments that are, that are all responsible for executing these holiday activations. Um, and the last part of the job was crowd control. So for anyone who's been on a cruise, um, it is a mission to get 4,000 people onto uh, and off of the ship in just a few hours. and, and given that entertainment has the best relationship with the, the guests, um, it was our responsibility to do that. Gotcha, gotcha. I know you touched a little bit on crowd control. Um, what, is, what do you think is the biggest challenges as far as uh, your position on the cruises? Was it the crowd control or was it something else as, as your biggest challenge? Partially, yeah. Um, I would say that you know, when you're working on a, on a cruise ship, um, safety is super important, right? So you're on this big hunk of metal that is somehow floating in the middle of the ocean. Um, you know, the, the biggest threat to a cruise ship is a fire. Um, and 
per maritime law, we're required to host a safety briefing at the beginning of every cruise before we're even allowed to leave port. And so um, thinking of it through the perspective of a guest, um, you're getting on a ship, you're, you're going on a vacation, you've saved up all this money, you're so excited. And the first thing that we want you to do is essentially like sit and listen to a class for 45 minutes. So stop all the fun, no eating, no drinking, just go and stand in the heat um, and listen to us talk about safety. Um, and I will say that was probably the most challenging is trying to capture their, their attention, uh, making sure that they were paying attention, but also making sure that they are retaining the information because you know, in the event of an emergency, um, it really is life or death. Mm -hmm. So safety is, is definitely a major issue. Does that also translate to your job now at Disney? Is that still your biggest challenge is safety or is is going to be something else? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a challenge, but it's something that I, I know, um, you know, me personally, as well as the company is, is super, um, super proud of, but also something that's really important to them. Uh, and so, you know, especially coming coming out of COVID where we had a lot of um, we had a lot of safety protocols that we were required to to implement and, and to uphold. Um, yeah, it was a challenge. Um, now, as we're making our way, you know, out of these protocols, things have have lightened up quite a bit, and and the guests are happier, and you know, we can see their faces, and um, super happy with the progress that we've made. Gotcha. I know Disney's real private, but could you w walk us through uh, just an average work day? in your position? Yeah, so, you know, I'd say as a guest experience manager, um, my, my biggest responsibility is um, maintaining the show. So making sure that, um, you know, all of our offerings are up to Disney standards. Um, and then there is that safety piece as well. So making sure that, um, you know, we're, we're creating a safe environment for our employees and their guests. Okay, so uh, what would make a good, what are some of the good qualities that you guys look for in people to work in that field? Uh, so what I can tell you is we, um, as a guest experience manager, we're not responsible for any sort of recruitment. We have a casting team that does that. Um, what I can do though, is I can just kind of tell you um, some traits that I have and, and my peers have as well. And maybe that'll kind of shed light on, you know, what they could possibly be looking for. Um, I can tell you that, you know, I work uh, alongside of um, several other guest experience managers that are all super passionate about what it is that we're delivering to the to the guests, um, and we're even more passionate about our, about our employees. And so um, it's a lot of, you know, being uh, empathizing, um, being there to support the cast, making sure that they have uh, the resources that they they need to be successful, um, and then just backing them up uh, in the event that you know something happens that requires our attention. Do you have some advice for someone trying to get in that field? Uh, I think the biggest advice that I would give to anyone is to have a lot of patience. Um, honestly, to, to this this role um, is uh, first of all I'm super grateful for, but um, you know I recognize that this is a highly coveted role. Um, it's a role that a lot of people want to have, um, and so because of that, it's really challenging to, to to get your foot in the door. And even once you get your foot in the door, there's a whole other challenge with trying to get like a full time position. Um, and so I, I think the biggest thing is is to just be patient. Um, be patient, um, recognize and, and accept that there's going to be a lot of rejection along the way. Um, and then to, to continue to network, um, I think that is what made me most successful in getting the role um, is really just, um, you know, leveraging the people that I know um, and having them connect me with people who um, have the, the job that I want. Um, and then gotcha. just really learning from them. Gotcha. I know you just touched on networking. So how important is networking in the entertainment field to you? Uh, to me, I, I, I think it's super important. Um, mm -hmm. It is when, when you're, and again, I, I don't have anything to do with recruitment here at Disney, but um, mm -hmm. when it comes to relying on people, um, it's, it's hard to trust people you don't know. Um, and so when you network and you get to know people, not just, um, you know, how they work, but you know, how they are personally, um, it just, it just kind of helps with, uh, with that. Gotcha. Now, um, were there some expectations that you had about the entertainment industry when you start doing, uh, when you start working on the cruise line that you found different? Um, 
Not so much. I will say the one thing that that did surprise me is um, how much it costs. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, entertainment costs a lot of money. Um, it also doesn't bring in any direct dollars. So, you know, when when you put on a show um, on a cruise ship, for example, um, you know, it's included. You're not you're not selling any tickets. Uh, and so for that, I, I've learned that um, it can be challenging to justify um, how much money needs to be spent on entertainment. Um, and I'd say that's that's sort of my my biggest uh, shock coming into the industry. Gotcha. Um, same question for Disney. Is there any, any you know expectations that you had that when you got the position that you just didn't meet your expectations or it was just different than you thought it would be? I will say my biggest um, shock coming into Disney is just how massive of a, of a company it is um, and how large of an operation is. Um, it is just, um, there's a lot more people that work here than I actually thought. You know, you hear you hear numbers, you know, on social media or in the news about how many people work here, um, but until you actually see it for yourself, um, it's a massive operation. Mm -hmm. And um, how long have you been in your position at Disney? So I've been in my current role here at Disney for uh, eight months. Eight months. Uh, yep, and I've been with the company for about a year and a half. About a year and a half. And what role did you originally start with? So uh, I was part-time attractions. Oh, attractions. Okay, so you just worked at the attractions, like letting people on the rides. And... Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, great. I like I like that step from attractions to event management. Uh, mean, it is. Yeah. It is um, highly unconventional, and um, it is <laughs> it's just not the typical route that people take to get to entertainment. But you know, uh -huh. I, I had the advantage that I had a lot of entertainment management experience um, outside of Disney, and I think that helped me quite a bit. Yeah. And again, it really had to do with networking. Um, you know, before I even interviewed for the role, I had met with so many entertainment managers, um, as well as um, a couple of proprietors. Um, do you feel like in your position that you that you are making a difference? Um, actually, yeah. So um, within my role, I oversee diversity and inclusion for entertainment here at Animal Kingdom, mm -hmm. um, and it's something that's super new to me. Um, as a member of the LGBTQ plus community, um, you know, I know what it's like to to be in um, a section of the community that that has unique challenges. And so I really take pride and joy um, in making sure that all of the voices of my employees are heard um, and that I'm really taking the time to celebrate and educate um, each of those uh, different communities. Um, I just wrapped up a project next week um, on Tuesday is World Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, and so, you know, just taking the time to to educate the the employees on on what that means and and how they can support that community. Gotcha. When that, um, says, yeah, I feel like I I make a difference. I have a question. I was going to actually save this question for last, but I, I'm just so interested to know what advice would you give a graduating student um, who's looking to get in the entertainment field? Um. a good question um you know i think i will revert back to uh, being patient is this is super important um but yeah um you know just just trying things i i think uh what also made me successful is you know i went out for you know i applied for positions that um i didn't feel like i was qualified for um for example when i went to work down in st martin um i hadn't held any formal entertainment like manager roles um, and I just applied for it and I interviewed and they flew me down to the island and I, I spent a few days in the hotel and, and I ended up getting it. Um, and so I wouldn't, I guess what I would recommend is, you know, when applying for positions, don't look at those basic requirements as being like you need to have those um, and, and feel feel encouraged to to push those a little bit and just and, and just see what you can do. That's actually a great answer. Um, you just touched on St. Martin. Um, what did you do in St. Martin? So in St. Martin, um, so this was after the cruise and before I worked for Disney, um, mm -hmm. I saw entertainment and guest experience for a resort group. So we had um, two all-inclusive resorts. One was family focused and then the other one was adults only. Um, and I oversaw um, all of entertainment. So we had a couple of production shows in our casino theater. Uh, we had atmosphere entertainment. We had some new programs. Um, so yeah. Did, did you enjoy that position? It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was my first time um, experiencing working with a budget. So um, I got to spend all of their money. Uh, and that was that was a lot of fun.
Mm -hmm. And so you, you enjoyed your position. What made you choose to leave that job to transfer to Disney? At that point, I had already spent about three years um, living away from Orlando and away from my family. Uh, and so it really was focused on, you know, being back here in Orlando with, with my family and my friends and I own a home here. Um, and so that was pretty much my motivation. Plus at okay. that point, I felt like I had had enough experience to, to work, to get a job with Disney, which has been my ultimate goal for the past five years or so. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, do you plan on moving to moving up in the field or are um, you comfortable maybe. where you are? Uh, I'm always looking for new opportunities to challenge myself. Um, I wouldn't say that it's on my immediate radar, but certainly down the line, something to consider. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a degree in entertainment management? I do, actually. I have an entertainment management uh, degree from UCF. UCF. Wow. Yep. That's amazing. And how long, um, when did you graduate from UCF? I graduated in 2019. Hi, Andrew. Sorry Hi. for that mistake. No problem. Something definitely happened there. I was just like, oh, no. Okay. Sorry about that. We need about <laughs> five more minutes. <laughs> We're like right. in the last four minutes. Yeah. Strike. No but problem. It was going real good. Don't worry. Like, everything lost. is going very well. We lost right. the feel a little bit. But, um... um well, what what I can I can just finish up real quick. Um, do apologize about that again. Mm -hmm. Um, my biggest my my biggest uh fear about going into the entertainment industry is that I'm gonna be stuck in the position. Um, I know you said that. You know, networking is a big thing in the entertainment industry. How do you know who to network with? Um, so here's a couple things that I've done. Um, anytime I read, so first of all, it's good to have a connection, right? Uh, the good thing for both of you is now both of you have a connection, which is me. Um, mm -hmm. and what I do is I typically find that one person. And once I find that person, I ask them to connect me with other people. So for example, um, next week I'm going to meet with the proprietor over at Disney Springs, uh, over there, entertainment over there. Um, and at the end of the conversation, you know, I go into these asking about their history, asking about, you know, their, their story. Um, you know, some words and advice. And then at the end of my conversation, I always say, um, who else can I meet with to learn more about this role? Um, and what that does is it kind of opens a door to meeting other people. Um, and, you know, typically uh, each conversation, you'll just get one other person that they'll, that they're willing to connect you with. Um, but sometimes, you know, I've, I've been introduced to three people. Uh, and when you have that next person, um, you meet them, you have the conversation and you do the same thing at the end. And it's, it, you know, you end the conversation with saying, who else can, can you introduce me to? Um, mm -hmm. And if you do that, then you will, you will always have a never ending trail of, of people to network with. And that's kind of how you expand your bubble. Mm -hmm. Is that somewhat your, like your elevator pitch? I know we learned that a lot in school about your elevator pitch. Is that somewhat your elevator pitch? Um, is when you're, hey, can you network me with someone else? Or can you link me up with someone else? Is so I will I will say that my conversations are always um, from from a from a a, point, a, a place of um, a just insight and information. So you know when I reach out to someone, it's very short and sweet. It's hi, I'm Andrew. Um, this is my position. Um, so and so intro, you know recommended I reach out to you. Uh, do you have time to to meet? Um, once once you meet with them, it's it's really just finding out about them. So you know here at Disney, I I start by saying, uh, you know, tell me your Disney story. You know, I might ask a couple follow-up questions like, you know, what is your favorite role? What was your least favorite role? You know, do you have any advice for someone in my position? Uh, and then, you know, at the end, just just swooping in and saying, well, who else can I meet that that might be able to help me on my journey? Gotcha, gotcha. I don't do it. I don't necessarily focus a conversation of, you know, who can you introduce me to? It's more of how do I get to know this person, and then just throwing it in at the end. Mm -hmm. What I is also, your drink? What? Is, oh, go ahead. I was going to say I also like to throw in. Um, some sort of material. So I always ask for a recommendation on like a book or a podcast. Um, and what that allows me to do it is, is it allows me to follow back up with that person. Um, and so, you know, I'll recommend a podcast. They'll give me a podcast. Um, maybe if about a month or two later, I'll follow back up and say, hey, I listened to your podcast. These are my thoughts. And again, what that does is it just kind of like keeps you fresh in their mind. 
Um, and I actually have a whole calendar, like a networking calendar of, um, you know, based off of, you know, the framework I just told you, um, you know, that remind me to follow up with this person. Um, and it just it's, it's filled with, with those types of those types of things. All right, wonderful. Now I don't have that, I don't have too much time, but I do have two questions that I need I need answered. Um, sure. uh, real quick, what is your Disney story? Um, so I actually started with Disney um, back in 2016 for the first time. I was just working seasonal um, operations for the show Fantasmic. Um, did that for about a year, went and did my other stuff, and then came back to attractions again um, at the beginning of the summer of last year. What is your dream job? Um, I I, I want to say that this is this is my dream job, um, you know, working as a guest experience manager in entertainment. Um, specifically under that umbrella, I think it'd be cool to come full circle and work as a stage manager for Fantasmic. Um, so that's kind of like my long-term goal for for now is, you know, how can I get back to that show, but on the entertainment side of things. Gotcha. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time today, even with that interruption. You was actually, you were actually real great today. And yeah, um, no yeah thank you very much. You're so welcome. Glad All I right. Bye. Have a good day.